Good evening. The latest focus of concern over the spread of coronavirus is Bolton in Greater Manchester, where tighter restrictions have now been introduced. Bolton now has the UK's highest rate of infection. Restaurants, pubs and cafes have been told they can only offer takeaways and they must close by 10pm. Ministers say the rise across parts of the UK is largely driven by people aged 18 to 30 who were accused of failing to observe social distancing. The latest official figures show there were 2,460 new confirmed cases of coronavirus reported across the UK in the latest 24-hour period. And that means the average number of new cases reported every day in the past week is 2,199. 32 deaths were also reported of people who died within 28 days of a positive test for COVID-19. And that means on average in the past week, 12 deaths were announced every day. And that takes the total number of deaths so far across the UK to 41,586. First tonight, our health editor, Hugh Pym, has this report. As the government considered new household restrictions for England, a tighter set of measures was announced for Bolton. Cafes like this won't be allowed to have customers sitting in. It'll be takeaway only. The owner, Jill, says because of these new rules, she'll have to close till further notice. The news for me is absolutely devastating. We were locked down for over three months. We were starting to build our trade back up. I know they're saying we can do takeaway, but unfortunately my shop isn't a shop that takeaway works. This pub and microbrewery will only be allowed to serve customers who take their drinks away with them. We have one eye on, on possible future events, that kind of thing. Um, so it's, it, it's frustrating, disappointing, but you've got to take, take it seriously and, and try and get through it again. Local people we spoke to weren't surprised by the new intervention. It's to be expected, really, to go back to where it was, really, yeah. to try and stop it. Yeah, I mean, it's rife in, in Bolton, isn't it, at the moment? It's like the virus is getting more and more each day and people are not listening, not fa wearing face coverings and there's still large gatherings. So in one way, it's good for the health and safety, but for the economy, it might not be good because they're just getting back on track. The new rules will be enforceable by law. No eating or drinking inside pubs or other hospitality venues and all to close at 10 every evening. Socialising by people in their 20s and 30s is said to be a factor in the steep rise in local case numbers. I call Secretary of State Matt Hancock to make a In the statement. Commons, the Health Secretary explained why young adults you should take every Secretary step to avoid infection. While young people are less likely to die from this disease, be in no doubt that they are still at risk. The long-term effects can be terrible and, of course, they can infect others. Research by the BBC for the week to September the 4th shows Bolton with the highest number of cases in the UK, 122 per 100,000 population. Next was Bradford with 71, then Blackburn with Darwin with 63, Oldham with 61, and Birmingham, Salford, Rochdale, Caerphilly and Burnley, all with 60 cases per 100,000. There's mounting concern in Birmingham after a sharp increase in virus cases in recent days, Local officials said one factor was people getting together over the bank holiday weekend and forgetting social distancing rules. They've warned that additional restrictions are looking likely. In some areas, booking tests is difficult, and today one of the system bosses tweeted apologies to anyone who couldn't get a test. She said laboratory processing was the pinch point. Ministers say they're working flat out to boost capacity, but with case numbers rising, widespread and rapid testing is as important as ever. Hugh Pym, BBC News. Well, the first local lockdown in Wales came into force this evening. No one can now leave the Caerphilly County Borough area without good reason. Family and friends living apart will no longer be able to meet indoors or stay overnight or form extended households. The Welsh Government says the restrictions could last until October. Let's join our Wales correspondent, Howell Griffith, who's in Caerphilly for us with the latest. Hugh, the lockdown came into force some four hours ago. It could stay in place for three or four weeks, we're told. Now, while the police say they won't uh, hold a cordon here at the county border, people are no longer able to travel in and out of Caerphilly County unless they have a valid reason, such as going to work. 
It means that plans to go and see friends or family are now off. People who had holidays booked have been told they should cancel, all because of the very recent, very rapid rise in cases, which shows no sign of slowing. Back under lockdown tonight, people in Caerphilly risk a fine if they venture out to the county without a valid reason. Just six weeks ago, the area was COVID-free. So what went wrong? House parties and people mixing in each other's homes are being blamed for a spike in cases, most amongst young people who stand accused of flouting social distancing rules. We're more likely to go out and see our friends, more likely to kind of break the rules if the option's there. But, uh, I mean, I think everyone's been sort of going, ah, you can't even point the fingers at one, one demographic in particular. A lot of people need to look at their actions, not only young people. And people have forgotten, I think, what it's like and what damage it can do and how many people have lost their lives. The lockdown won't mean a shutdown of pubs, cafes and restaurants. The evidence suggests that isn't where the virus has been spreading. But people can no longer meet indoors. And Caerphilly has become the first place in Wales where masks are mandatory in shops. The rules will be enforced. People who thought coronavirus was no longer a threat should sit up and take notice. People in those communities who see behaviour taking place, who see and hear house parties, well, if they're going to tell the police about those, we expect enforcement action to be taken. Like temperature checks when they come through the door, hand sanitising stations. While businesses can stay open, keeping their customers may be harder. Sarah only fully reopened her spa four weeks ago. The last 24 hours has brought a flurry of cancellations. Caerphilly is a small county borough at the end of the day. There's still a lot of people who perhaps are two or three or four miles away who are actually in a different county. So we are already seeing the impact of that on today's business, for example. This is the first local lockdown in Wales, but with cases rising in neighbouring counties, there are warnings others may follow within days. Howell Griffith, BBC News, Caerphilly. Well, as we've been reporting, the number of coronavirus cases across the UK has been rising in recent days. Uh, but how do the numbers then compare to earlier stages in this pandemic? Our medical editor, Fergus Walsh, has been looking at the figures. So, Fergus, this is one of the bays of our intensive care unit that was full back in April, May with patients with coronavirus. For weeks now, London's University College Hospital has hardly seen any coronavirus patients across its 500 beds. What a difference from when we filmed here at the peak. Then the intensive care unit had to double in size to cope with the influx. Now it's empty of COVID patients. But confirmed cases of COVID infection have risen fourfold since mid-July. As this graph for England shows clearly, it is mostly people in their 20s and 30s who are testing positive. Those figures showing who is getting coronavirus help explain why this and other intensive care units are not filling up with COVID patients. The young are generally at low risk from the virus, but there's concern that if it spreads further in the community, things could change here in the coming months. We're always used to, anyway, having more people coming to hospital with respiratory virus infections in the winter. The worry is that the sort of people who get infected are the sort of people who we saw previously, the older population, the people with comorbidities, people with other risk factors for doing badly and ending up in hospital. We've had to do it too. It's Shielding of those with health vulnerabilities may need to be reintroduced if cases spike. It's a difficult balance to safeguard those most at risk while keeping society functioning. We have to protect our children's education as much as we can um, because the impacts of that will last for decades. We've also got to protect and encourage the economy in ways that won't actually unnecessarily increase the death rates. The NHS is open for business, but UCH says many patients are still too scared to come to hospital because they fear catching coronavirus. It is one of the many hidden costs of COVID. Fergus Walsh, BBC News.